Hey everyone, it's Joe Lyons here at The Automator, and today I have a Dimitri and Isaias, and both these guys, were, today we're going to cover some of the really cool new stuff in version 2, some of the, why you should also you switch over to version 2, and, and what I asked was also some of the gotchas, things to look out for, because I know V2, it's, you know, it's different. So, um, Dimitri, do you want to, you guys want to say hi real quick? And Yeah. Hi. Yeah, yeah hello. <laughs> And both of you guys should say a little bit of how much of you use V2, if you were to say, like, I, I know, Dimitri, you led our webinar. If you haven't seen it, watch our webinar on V2, which was great. Um, I'm not using it as often. I have made some scripts, and I actually read a lot. Like, I was mm. looking at the documentation, verifying the changes, what is new, what is different. But I have done, like, five to seven scripts, little scripts. Yeah. And I'm loving it, by the way. I, I like it. Um but we're going to be talking about different specific things about it, about why you might want to switch or why not. Yeah, and I started to use uh, V2 when uh, the beta 2 version came out, I think. That was more uh, a stable version. And uh, I did a lot of work on the converter. I actually converted it to, to the stable version. And it's now actually working better and better. It's not perfect and you, you cannot expect that it works every time, certainly not for complex scripts, mm. but for simple things, it, it will, will work quite fine. And it, it's a good guide to, to, if you have, if you want to convert something. I also have uh, experimented a lot on uh, GUIs because uh, V2 is actually way better to, to, to yeah. create GUIs. Uh, yeah. I agree with well, that. What I was also going to say, even though we're, you know, this video is about like the strengths of E2 and some of the complexities and, you know, however you want to phrase it, it's not drawbacks necessarily, it's just things to get used to. You can still plan to leave your older stuff if it's more complicated in V1, right? We're not yeah, trying to say you should migrate everything over. No, no, no. no. It's just at exactly. some point, maybe you want to start with your newer stuff in, you know, or if you have simpler ones, as Dimitri said, you know, maybe convert those over. Mm -hmm. On that, my opinion would be like, even though you will stay, for example, if you have very complex scripts, you will try to stay on V1 as much as long as you want. It is kind of like a, a time bomb. Like at some point it's gonna go off and your script is no longer gonna be valid. So right. it is something that probably, if you cannot do it right away, but it is something to think about, go by, part by part and try to convert whatever you can first. And then when right. it's the time then, just a very that. valid point, Isaiah, is because, uh, mainly is because somewhere in the next, let's say, 18 months to 24 months or so, it's going to be the new version of Auto Hotkey, right? That's like that is, yeah. so at some point, it behooves you to start really looking into it. <laughs> yeah. So then, then you're going to be running uh, against the clock. Like, oh my right. God, it is the main. Oh, when is my version one going to be deprecated? Yeah. Like, like the other one was. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. All right. So, Dimitri, I think you had some stuff you were going to share. Yes. And to, to mention something, I have a script on my work. It's, I think, 40,000 lines. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a small one. Yeah. Okay. Tiny one. I, I try to start converting it. And uh, of course, it's, a, it's a, a script that contains a lot of libraries. So, it's mm. massive. And even I'm not sure if I manage it and uh, well, also I, I don't have the time to to convert it so yeah but i wouldn't call see. that a script i would call it a program <laughs> that's a full-fledged program right <laughs> so that's a whole it's, program and, and it is not gonna be converted right now you know it it started out as a script just to do one function oh wow <laughs> <laughs> and now you're at forty thousand lines of it oh my god yes that's awesome but of course, if you add libraries, you're, you easily get yeah. uh, more and more lines. And actually for this webinar, I, uh, I will use uh, my converter because it's quite easy to, uh, to show some uh, V2 and V1 scripts. Uh, can you see my converter? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, to start, of course, uh, the most typical uh, change is if you define variables 
the equal sign is, is gone now. Mm -hmm. So you need to to use uh, the two points and the equal sign to define something. And actually, uh, if you write it like this, V2 will interpret it as a, uh, a test to see if the variable var is equal to the variable test in this case. Uh, I would I would right away like jumping like the first thing we have to kind of like get out of the room. But the the reason why that is happening is because version two, everything is an expression now. So you are inside an expression the whole time. That means that that equal sign is actually comparing two things. As you would do in version one, if you have parentheses and you put an equal sign in there, it's not assigning a variable. It's actually comparing them. So as everything is an expression now, then now that is not valid any longer. Well, and, and let me chime in for, for being the idiot in the room. On the left in version one, I would often use this when I would have like double quotes and I was like, hey, I want, I'm trying to sign something that has a double quote and I think it looks crazy. So I'm going to say var, you know, equals Equal. colon test, test, but I wanted the test quotes, you know, I wanted those in there, right? right? And it was a super handy, easy way to kind of cheat the system. However, what's beautiful, and I know this from talking to Isaias, is mm -hmm. in the one, now your converter did this differently. It's, but what you, It is doing it different, yeah. Yeah, you could have just wrapped the uh, those with the single quotes um, instead, and which, which unfortunately, because they're the simple double quotes, they're not pretty ones. It's hard to read, but it works, right? Like it's because of this, yeah, in this case, it's because of the syntax there highlighter. If there was a syntax highlighter, you would yeah, see fair the enough. difference. Yeah, but as all the text is black, you wouldn't see them that much, yeah. but you would see them uh, on in any editor that would highlight them. And it would be quite easy to just do that. If you want quotes, then you put the double quotes surrounded by single quotes, and that way you don't have to escape them any longer. Right. And the yeah, other it, way around too. Yeah, exactly. And if it if version two didn't have that, like I'm not saying it'd be a deal killer, but it would I'd be like really, really bummed. But <laughs> it's so easy once you can alternate. Oh, this one has a double quote in it. Okay, use single quotes. It's it's so much easier. So anyway, right, yeah. exactly. And of course, the, the old way also works to use the escape character. The back uh, yeah. That's a, but two times using quotes like it it worked in, uh, wait, in the version one. It's not working, in I think. Version one, uh, I think if you do it like this, you would get the test with... Uh, the quotation marks around, yeah. Yeah, but which... it, yeah, but that, I think that doesn't work in um, version two, right? Right, exactly. You get the quote there. Yeah. You get the quote. If we but in version it... two, do you get that? No, exactly. Ah, I found an error. <laughs> so, so it, it... I'm always happy to find an error in my converter. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. So basically, that, that, that's the thing. So um, one of the things that I read in the documentation is that this double quote escaping is no longer valid. So yeah. 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 Mm. This, then this should be... That, that like should this. be the correct, the correct way of doing it or using the back ticks to escape it, yeah. And actually, just what you said, like, uh, you are happy to find an error, right? The only programmers would say something like that. Right. <laughs> I'm so happy to find it so I can fix it. <laughs> of yeah. course, uh, this also demonstrates um, in V1, for example, if you say message box var, then the var is interpreted as a text. Mm -hmm. So if you run it, you get really var. Yes. And that confused me a lot of times because with a lot of commands, you always needed to look oh. into the help file, file to see is it interpreted as a variable or as text? As an expression. And this is the funny one. So you would say, oh, commands, they use text in each of the parameters. No, the sleep command actually accepts an expression right next to it. 
and there's other commands that it yeah. would allow you to put some t in each parameter, it would be text. And one of them is actually an expression. And you're like, what, how, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah. It was annoying. <laughs> Which is part of the point of version two, right? Is yes. to kind of get rid of those yes. nuances. Yes. It is kind of yeah. like making everything kind of like the same. Yeah, indeed. Um, also another thing, um, if you, call a variable that is not existing like this mm -hmm. in version 2 you get an empty string so you get nothing it's in version 1 you mean right in version 1 yes Sorry. okay <laughs> in version 2 you get an error because he will indicate yeah you you never never defined the variable so i'm something is wrong and uh you you could like it or dislike it, but Oof. for my experience, I like it because it shows you a lot of more errors in your scripts. Um, in version one, couldn't you turn on warn? Would it have warned on that in version one? They added it later, yes. Uh, and, and just to clarify something, um, even though you mentioned that it was an error, the script will run. Mm-hmm. So, so, so it's not like the script is going to stop running. It is just that at the beginning, it would warn you that some variables do not have any values. And um, it is just for you to avoid unexpected results because you're thinking that the um, variable... So, for example, just as a, as a, as a, as a um, kind of like an example. Um. I, I just tested it, and mm -hmm. you, you said that it will warn you, but it will warn you at every line you try to do it. Right, and then it says try to continue anyways. You say yes, and it would run the script. So the yeah, message but... box, so just continue, say yes. It should kind of like continue running the script, but um, it, it will give you the warnings. I think that sh sh just warns you once per variable, I think. Let's see. That is now my uh, question. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> hold on. It keeps, uh, it keeps, it keeps going. giving errors. Yes. Oh, no, hold on. But let's do this because you're using the message box. But try the sleep command. Because the thing is that the message box is trying to access the variable. But let's do this. Try the sleep command. Sleep and uh, remove the message box one. So it would tell you that. Uh -huh. How about if you put another command around it, like something else, like put uh, assign a variable below the slip command. Call so for. just put in there, just assign a variable, any text, yeah. whatever. To see if the script actually goes ahead. So just assign a variable, test equals whatever, and a message box for text. Right. See if it actually a message it. box for test only. To see if actually if it actually runs that part of the script, because what I understand is that it, it will actually tell you uh, there it is. So you yeah. do so the script is going to run. It it warns you that var, yeah. var was not set, mm -hmm. and every time the script is trying to access that variable, it's going to warn you about it. But the other part of the script is going to continue running fine. You know. Yeah, uh, and as soon as you define as the variable. Mm -hmm. Well, probably at the beginning, because you defined it afterwards, right? You got the yes. first, you got the first uh, warning because it was not defined the first time, but after the second time, it was already defined. So it will not warn and, you anymore. Indeed. And as far as I have tried to find it, uh, you couldn't disable this warning. Oh, uh, yes, you can. Yeah. I was going to ask you that, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, so if you go in version two. So, yes, uh, my version two uh, information is black. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is so, so that you know, so that you know, it's awesome. Which one you're in? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <was> like, <laughs> so I do think that um, you can select if you go down uh, local time is global on reachable. Um, if you select all, I think it would disable all all of them. So let me see, warning mode, study out. Wait, oh, maybe the examples. Oh, 
Yeah, you would have to re so if you want to disable the one for the for the variables, you would have to disable them all. Like warrant all or all you know and off then. Right, yes. So if you put at the top warrant all off, you shouldn't get that. Oh wow. That that actually worked before. Or maybe yeah. maybe it's it's a bug or Maybe he wants to, he intends to keep it that way. I'm not really sure about that one, but, <laughs> but that is something that it was actually working prior to this. Because, of course, there's a lot of people who do not like that. Well, I was going to yes. say, is, is on version one, you can use the warn to say that the var has not been defined. Isn't that correct? Yeah, you can do the, the opposite of it. Like you, you can turn on the, right. the, um, the so warning. It's really the it's really the, the what defaults are being set is the diff main difference, right? So, yes, so but now I'm a little bit surprised that you cannot turn it off. So that yeah. is something that I was not. Yeah, I would hate that. Uh, well, and, and for, no, just for, me. For, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying for me. Yeah. But I get it. It's yeah. like, you. why would you want that? Why would you oh, want to? I, 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 like, like, for example, it's not why would you want it. It's because it spares you from certain type of issues. Right. So in that same loop, just, just right there, just remove the code inside the co the block from the loop. The, uh -huh. Which block? And yes. So that code. Ah, just the loop. No, just keep the loop. Actually, I want you to keep the loop. Remove the other code. Yeah, so loop 10, whatever. Just do 10 of those. And what you're going to do... It's just var pl uh, plus plus plus, just var plus plus. Just try to, uh -huh. and then in the end, after the loop, just do message box variable. So here, this looks like a very simple code that should work. I just grab a variable and increment it when the loop is going on. We know by experience from version one that if the variable is not set to zero, that is not going to work. Why? Because if the variable does not have any, uh, so the plus plus must be right next to the var. You have a space right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in that case, it will tell you, yeah, so it is, it is an unset variable. And it's going to tell you like, hey, you're trying to do something. Now, just imagine you're doing this big program. And in one of the programs, you say, oh, I need a counter. And you add that and you just hit OK. Later on, you figure out that the thing is not working. Why it's not working? Now you have to search through your whole program to see where it's not working. But if you get a warning, hey, the variable has never been assigned uh, um, uh, a value, and it tells you the the line of where that is happening, you don't have to search. You just go there. Oh, so I put variable equals zero, and that's it. You fix the error. So it's trying to prevent those kind of things. Yeah. Also, for example, if you use this, the name of the variable a lot of times in mm -hmm. different loops and you first call the uh, one loop and afterwards another one and mm -hmm. you assume that that variable was empty so that it was zero, but it could be possible that it's still safe from another loop. From another loop. And that yes. would cause problems. Yes. So it's good programming to Define the variable yeah. to be zero. Uh, that would prevent errors like that. So yeah. I understand this mindset, but it's annoying in some cases because a lot of scripts rely on, ah, I, I don't need to, to define the variable actually. It's just empty or zero. Uh, let's assume that. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I understand. And most of the times I don't mind this, uh, this behavior, except uh, if you you wanted to use uh, uh, pseudo variables. Oh, so, the pseudo uh, ones, yeah, like this go, one. Go like this one that uh -huh. you. Uh, yeah, here for example, I I also added some declaring of some variables to indicate this is the way you could cheat it. Uh, if you want to use pseudo variables, if you know the, 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 amount, of of them, the amount of them, yeah. variables, you could define them first as empty, and then mm -hmm. I'll, I will play it. You see the first four you will accept, and then you will get errors. And the number five would not, yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. So that, I, I, I do understand why it's there. I understand also why some people might find it annoying. And, and Isaiah, correct me if I'm wrong, both of you guys. Again, this is why, for the most part, I tell people, hey, if you're completely new to programming, you know, and you know, don't plan to be a programmer, version one is probably a little bit better for you. If you are a programmer or you plan to stick with AutoHotKey or whatever it is for a while, then version two is probably better because as a noob, as someone that's not a programmer, to me, I'm like, I don't, I don't care about that crap. You know, I mean, I understand your point, Isaiah, is that, hey, I have this really big program and, you know, I got to go back and figure out where I didn't set this variable. If I'm a noob, I don't have a really big program. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and I think that is a really good point. Um, when you're a, a, a person who is new to programming, a relaxed environment is better for you because you can make a little bit of things that you don't have to think about. Here's, here's, I, I understand and I mostly agree with what you said. I just have a stipulation, Isaiah, mm -hmm. is it gets back to your goals. If your goal is at some point, I really want to be a programmer, then I disagree with what you said because it is going <laughs> oh, to no, encourage no, no, because, Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. No, I, I understand. Yeah. So, but, but in general, like uh, you're learning. The one thing that you have to learn are, you know, the loops, the how to do uh, functions and those kind of things. If every time you're trying to use right. a variable, it's going to be annoying you about right. it, you're going to get discouraged. But then after, a, after you understand the basics, yeah. now having it more straight right. and now it's saying like, oh, right here. yeah, like now here, this is how you're supposed to do it. You know, like I think. In VBA, if I remember right, is this correct? I think it was like the option explicit or something. You could you could turn that off to allow you kind of this thing of like I don't have to declare my variables. And right. I didn't when I was learning VBA, I didn't know that was a thing. And I yeah. I actually just I dropped out of the VBA you're course because yeah, I'm like, like son that. of a bitch, like I couldn't get the stuff going. And I'm like, whatever. Um, yeah. If I had realized that I could just have disabled that, I I probably would have finished the course. Which is what I mean, at, the begin, at the beginning, it should be a little bit more relaxed. But in this case, so for example, just look at this. It's just like two, four, six, ten lines of code, right? And now you're forced to do this line in which ID one, two, three, and four right. are empty, which serve no absolute purpose there. In this case, it's not needed, you know? So that's where having a warn disable would right. be good for me just to... Don't warn me about yeah. anything. I'm just doing a very quick script that I don't need to deal with it, right? Or what I maybe would want to have is just one function to say, okay, I want to create a variable, but I don't know the value yet. So to be able to, to do this, but maybe on another way, just to say, uh, in this case, it's possible that ID one did not exist existed yet. Right. Um, you to can bypass use it, the try yes. catch, the try catch command, maybe, but no, that that is an nope. error that is being thrown prior to the script being read. So, so I haven't found a solution for this issue. Uh, mm. uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong here, but in version two, this would work as well. You could on the version, I'm sorry, on the ID that one, two, three at the top, you could say ID colon equals one. And lose the double quotes and comma and set that to two and set that to three and then set that to four. And then four is the one you define as zero. Is that right? I mean, you mean like this? Yeah, yeah. Like all yeah. of them with, yes, yes, right. you can do that. And you can so do just that a little, yeah, yeah. little less can, code, that's all. But. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, you can yes, but still, this is actually yeah, garbage. It. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, works, <laughs> but, it works, but it's not what you want. Right. Yeah, but in yeah. some cases, it would be a solution because actually if, if you see the code here, it was actually a conversion of, uh, to, to get the, the program manager list. Um, and you actually get a, a, a object so you can work with it. So this is not necessary anymore, but I, here it was an attempt to convert something and you see that, that it fails. Yeah. Um, but objects, there was a little bit more about objects that is kind of strange. I have some. I object. <laughs> <laughs> right, 
Let's see. Actually, it. Um, no, I'll. I have written a little bit about objects because it's maybe a little bit confusing for a lot of people who don't use it and a lot. Oh. And um, you have arrays that just a list of values, and the first value has a key one, the second one has a key two, the third one has a key three. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's a lot of difference between version one and version two, except the same problem you also get here. If you haven't defined the key, then version two will give you an error, while version one will give you an empty string. And uh, in version can, can, can two, you, you... Can you show an example? Because I, I yeah. didn't understand exactly what you meant by that. Because, okay, for example, uh, in this case, an array should not have keys. Well, the keys are set automatically, automatically right. to yes. a, a, an index, right? So, for so, example, you have here a, an array. Uh huh. And then we will call the array. I'm not sure if this works. Let's try it. Um, um, Normally, I would. Uh, ah, so actually, he accepts the point one as. Yeah, that as shouldn't to be. Define. That shouldn't be true. That's that's an error. And that's the. <laughs> I'm gonna explain. <laughs> no, it's later. not an error, but <laughs> it's a strange behavior of version one, <laughs> and version two will not accept this. No, of course, uh, and I'm going to explain you why. But yeah, I, I, I yeah. know, I know what That's, you referred to. There. Uh, here is the yeah, the that should two that should, script. Yeah, that shouldn't. Yeah, that that's that's an error right there. Why? Because actually, version two is is stricter, but for me, it's easier because it's understandable. Yeah, but no, ah, that's the issue. Yes. So, I get it. So, so, so this is one of those things that is a bug that can be considered a feature, right? So for you, it's like a feature. Oh, that's better. No, it's not. Um, no, I don't like, I, I like the version two version because, oh, okay. because it's, it's clearer. It's, it's cleaner. It's better course. defined. It's not that messy. It's right, right. version one of us confusing because that is extremely confusing. You, you try to learn how should I call values like that and you yes. have two ways to do it and it's you all get mixed up and yeah yes and 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 let me let me so so here is where um whenever you and this is something i just wanted to kind of like do this parenthesis here whenever you're dealing with something professionally or when you dive into something as a amateur or something that is more than just a hobby right you want to be, you want specificity. You want to be specific about the things that you're talking about so that you can uh, refer to different things with different names. So what happens is that here on the left, so let me go ahead and uh, maybe if you allow me to annotate, I would do that. So here you have a list. And um, so um, Joe, I think you know, if I'm referring to the position on those, to each position, do you remember how I would call that? Like, what would that be on an array? That would be the index. That's what I would say, right? So in programming, I have a name for that. The position of a specific value inside an array or a list, mm -hmm. it would be its index. Its index is one, its index is two. Now, when you have an object, like this. So in this case, you have this dot and you have something right next to it. That what is right next to the dot can be what is called a property. It's not an index. Okay. So, so basically when we're referring to objects, the objects has keys and values. That is an object. When you have a class, you have properties and methods. They look very similar, but they're not the same. Mm -hmm. But when you have an array, you have indexes and mm -hmm. values. 
So for, for me to know that that is an index and not a property, that's the way, that's the cleaner way for me to refer to it. When, when I put it, as he put it at the beginning, like a dot and a one, I'm yep. not referring to an index. I'm well, actually referring to a property or a value, which is not really the case. It's kind of funny that this came up because remember what, not four days ago, I was talking to you about, is there a way to detect whether my is object an array? Is an array or it's an actual key value pair? And I'm like, uh -huh. you know, and in, in, in V1, not really, you know. No, in version one, there's no way. Now here no. in version two, you can, no. because you can check if the variable is an array, if, if it's an object, if there is, and actually you can type it exactly like that. If var is array, and it will tell you if it is true or not. Oh, cool. Yes. Love it. <laughs> yeah. awesome. And if you actually use the type function, type would actually return the type. It would say array if it is an cool. array. Awesome. So, so yes, version two has that, but it couldn't have it when it was behaving on us in version one. In version one, everything was behaving the same way. You couldn't differentiate between them. Yeah. All right, now, now, now whoever, it makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah. But Dimitri is typing something which is is one I'm going to have a bone to pick with here in a minute if he's going where I think he's going with it. Yes, um, I'm going there. With a map? Oh, yeah. <laughs> because all my life, I loved Auto Hotkey because it's not case sensitive, right? Like, I'm like, Ah uh, no, I, no, I it's that's, not that's that. different. No, it's not. That's he's not, he's showing something else. No, but well, all right. Here, um, I, here I created a map. A map is something new for V1 users. It's actually a associative array. Yes, mm -hmm. that's true. He um, went exactly where you went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he went. And uh, here it's clear in V2 you have indeed you have values. Uh, defined according to the, the keys mm -hmm. and you have properties mm -hmm. here you define the map you define the values of, of the map here I say the property is something else and here you see you see if I request the property I get indeed the string test um maybe oh, because the the, the key one. is to the key is has to be capital r yeah that one exactly right there just which is yeah it's ah, exactly okay. what it was. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah okay yeah, exactly so, that yeah <laughs> so yes and and basically that's exactly um if you could do this for me let's do this so um just put the map, remove all this code, just leave the map, just the map declaration. Yeah. yeah, just the map declaration, just remove the code, right? Yeah. Now red, you put test, that's okay, that's okay. Now yeah. below red, do the same, but with capital, not like that, just exactly like this, but with capital. Ah. Ah. Let's try that. I and give me- Thank you, will. Yeah, so give me a different, give me a test two or something, right? Let's try that. What do so you get? Hit okay. Yeah, again? you get test two, so. For, that's for this one. Well, for <coughs> both, actually. No, no, that's, no, that's for this message box. Right. Okay. So we have overwritten the first property. So it's not case sensitive. But in this case, it's not, right? So this is. In this is case. Not. Right, but if you do it with the with the exactly like this, now do the same lowercase and uppercase for those. That should give you two different values now. I think it should, or it is with the object. I, I, um, one of them is case sensitive. Don't need this line. So that is get... red. Yeah. You get so that's the first one. So that's well. the maps are case sensitive. Now, now hold on. Click, click OK here, and um, can you put a second message box in there with the other one? L yeah, exactly the same, but ah yeah. uh, no, wait. Uh huh. And now the same, but case uh, the the lower uh, case here. Yeah, let's try that. Let's see what we get. So we've got 
You see, so uppercase and lowercase. Now, here's the thing again, and this is the part that people will have a little bit of trouble understanding. This not, here, not only that, in previous scripts, you will assume that it didn't matter and you wouldn't care if you were coding. And so, <laughs> but that's the thing. Now, you'll get errors. Yes, but here's the thing those two things are different. And they mean different thing. If you put a dot and red and actually accessing it this way, they're two different things. They mean different things. Yeah. Um, and that's the reason why it is case sensitive here on the bottom, but it's not case sensitive here on the top. You see? So that's... that's, also, that's... I, I think the method is called uh, has own property. Has own property. Yeah. And the here one. then uh, red, I think like this. Mm -hmm. That is to, to check if the value exists. Exactly. Because uh, if you use objects, you will need it a lot to check. I, I use it a lot. If the property yeah. exists, uh, else I do something else. Don't uh, you have like another function that is called has only? Yes, and has. Uh, is, is to, to check if the if the value if, exists. It's of a value exists exactly. Yeah. One thing is that, a property, and another one is a value. Yeah. Well, what and is I think that is also kind of confusing for people. Yeah. Probably they they will mix up has own prop and has. Yes, they're different. <laughs> but if you understand that the that it's not the same, one is a value and one the other one is a property. Then it makes sense. Uh, so, so just think about it like this: index and uh, value, and then you have a key and value, and then you have property and value. So those are the so so those things. Index has to do only with arrays. Yes. Keys have to do with object, well, with um, maps, maps, and yeah. properties have to do with oh, objects. Gosh. So the, and that's the that's what I was trying to explain at the beginning. That's the reason why words we get very specific about them because they actually mean something else. And when you're coding, they, when we're referring to each of them, this in here is a property this in here is a key and that's the reason why i could tell because you're writing them differently if you write them the same then i could not tell which one is which one that's the that's the point of it so so let me ask two questions here the first one on line four at the beginning the plus greater than is that something like is that no no no, no. he okay. just he was just pointing out something no, okay. no, no. just making sure um i just want to indicate how you check Yep. If the value exists, because mm -hmm. that is also a function that we, we in V1, it was not necessary, or, or you would just uh, ask, is map point, uh, yeah. Wait, yeah, is map point red? Is it uh, empty? And then you and would that's do it. something. <laughs> and now you need to call that function. Right. Uh, and for the other one, it is. Uh, has I think it is has I and it's it probably is. also case sensitive. It is. Uh, well, hold on. Uh, yeah. So the the value that you input here is case sensitive. Yes. No. So yeah. No. Yeah. You you just get ones because it exists. They exist. But now, if you if you put it, something, yeah, if you put something that it doesn't you, exist, you get zero. zero. Yes. Yeah because it doesn't have that property. But yes, those are the things that um, um, <laughs> version two is more strict in the sense that it, let, it makes you think about what you're doing. If you're setting up an array, yeah. you cannot call any properties of it because an array doesn't have properties. 
in Outer Hotkey version one, you could do whatever you wanted, as he showed. You could put an array, put a dot, and then just call whatever you wanted in there. And, and, and that led to a lot of confusion and a lot of the bugs that you will find in your programs are related to that, but you don't know that they're bugs oh. because you didn't even notice. <laughs> Let, let, me, um, let, me correct, let me correct you excuse there. Excuse me, in V1, it was not a bug. <laughs> no, it was not a bug. <laughs> well, even then, Isaiah, the, here coming from a, a non-programmer, right, I would say I disagree with your last statement mm -hmm. because it, for me, it is how I use them. Like, I'm not doing the advanced stuff. Like, that's what I'm right. saying is I get, I understand a, not everything, but a lot of what you guys just covered, right? right. I can grasp that there's benefits to what you're seeing. Because I would say it's not just that it's stricter. I'd say it's even more advanced, right, is how I might also phrase it. Because clearly you get some benefits that. from having these different types of things, right? Yes. My question would be, okay, for for all the extra, quote, unquote, confusion, at least for people like me, mm -hmm. what are the extra benefits we're getting out of it, right? Because, like, uh, you know. I understand. That is going to, yeah. That's the, and that's the thing. So. What's going on with Auto Hotkey is that it's maturing. So probably uh, when you when once you enter into Auto Hotkey, everybody was a noob, everybody was testing out, everybody's good. Now there's a lot of those people who started out ten years ago that mm -hmm. now are doing forty thousand line programs. Sure. Now those people are finding a lot of issues that could be solved well, yeah. by being a little bit more clear, but. That affects then the people who are new because now the learning curve is going to be a little bit higher. Well, That's because, you know, I wouldn't honestly really care much if it wasn't the fact that one of the biggest draws of AutoHotKey is it's so easy to pick up and learn, right? Like now, that's what brings people to it. It's one of the biggest draws. Now, here's the thing. It hasn't changed much. You're going to do the same things. Now, there are some other things that... And, 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 and trust me, I thought when I was going to start coding in AutoHotKey version 2, I thought that I was going to be like, oh, I have to relearn this. Oh, I have to relearn mm -hmm. that. Um, it happened because I use certain functions that now have different names, right? But for the most sure. part, most of the things that you're doing, the changes are minimal for people who are new to AutoHotKey. So if you're starting, and, and he has shown, most of the things, um, for example, if you have a message box on this side and put it on the other side, the only difference would be that the text has to be quoted. And that's it, basically. Uh, and where you put the options of that message box, maybe. But most of the commands that you already use are going to look almost exactly the same, except for the quotation marks. That's it. Um, now, for the people like me that have been working for a long time with this, and I have been dealing with com objects and the com objects expect certain things and I need to do this. And then it becomes a little bit better for me to be able to be clear about what I, my intentions are. So that later on down the line, I don't have to be debugging, which is <laughs> where most of the time goes. You spend more time debugging than actually writing code. So I think that's what it helps with. Okay, well, let's go. I'm not good on debate. I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong or anything, right? I'm no, just saying, no, no, no. I know. like, there's, with anything, right? When, yeah. when you make it more advanced, there's going to be some people, and no matter what, you make changes and people aren't going to like it, right? It's just the way it is. And some people are going to love it, right? So I'm not trying to weigh in. I'm saying for me, like, this is, uh, you know, it's a <laughs> headache. Um, it doesn't mean I won't switch at some point, right? It's just saying, like, oh, man, I, I love the fact I didn't have to worry about case sensitivity. And now if I'm working in a certain way, I do. Oh, no, no. But here's the thing. No, here's the thing. So you see that for you don't like case sensitivity, right? Then I, I never do that. If you <laughs> use the objects, if you use the objects with the curly braces as you usually do, well, You're yeah, but, deal but again, I might borrow yeah. someone else's code that has that and then and end up not. In oh, yeah, that's true. That's but, for, that's, but, that's true. <laughs> when they get, we don't have to rehash. That. I'm just saying like, no, for no, some yeah. people, <laughs> right. But let, let's keep going along because I'm not, I'm not knocking the value. Right. I'm just saying I know. I know. it does lessen the, the entry level of how easy it is. Yeah. The learning at a cost, but it's, it's yeah. not that the cost isn't, isn't worth it. Right. I'm not, I have no idea on that. Right. It's mm -hmm. just. Want to throw it out there? So let's let's yep. move on to the next yeah, fun, actually, fun thing. I I uh, I think it's it's a, no, it's not the same. Um, 
in version 2 I think you could call it like objects was it like this to define an object with I'm sorry let me see to define an object how would you where, where, where are you I'm not sure uh, if you're typing I cannot see it on your street so you just yeah. do a, an object just with curly braces the normal way how you usually do it so so yeah, go, yeah. But what, what but I don't like object, with the yeah, map can... function here, you have first the, the name of the value. The key. And then the value. And then the value, yeah. The key and value. And then the name. And the comma is, if you have a lot of them and they look similar, yeah, it's, uh -huh. it's not yeah. useful. So um, that is something that I don't like uh, for the map. Oh well, I never, I never actually define them that way. So I just, I just make it map without any definition, and then below I try to do it as usual. So yeah. this would be a normal. This would be an object as we know yeah. them, and and if you do it this way, then you're not gonna get this um, because now you're getting properties. So that is yeah. not case sensitive anymore. So that's okay. Yes, but in this case, it's very easy. This is the name of the property. This is the value. And you yeah. go on like this. But uh, with this kind, you cannot use spaces, of course. Uh, no. uh, that's kind of logical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That is also one big difference between a map and an object. Uh, because I think a lot of users get confused. What is an array object map? But mm -hmm. if you just see them beneath each other, it's quite simple it's not that complicated but mm -hmm. you you don't want to confuse them yes okay then uh GUIs oh yeah the GUIs. <laughs> um yeah GUIs are now object oriented and mm -hmm. I love it why because I use a lot of GUIs and multiple GUIs and then it's way easier if you have an, a variable that contains that GUI and it's way easier to grab it and to hold it. Yeah, it's if you work with a program that has multiple windows, you love this because in version one it was very confusing. Yeah. Oh my God, how many times I have tried to use a list view function then to find out that the GUI that I'm trying to work on is not the default. So that's the reason why my function is not working. So I have to actually make it the default first or any command like GUI control get. Now I have to put this name of the GUI in front of it. Like now if you, if you just have a variable and you know that that variable is the one that has everything that to do with that GUI, then it is a little bit easier. Um, I would say the most important part about uh, having these kind of guys like this is that you can, comp how do I say, like the the function, you can put functions to something like on event. You see this on event? Yeah. Um, before you had to use this G label thing. Mm. Now it's not like that. It is like on, you can add an on event listener. And that is a little, for me, it's a little bit better. Like it, it changes everything. Yeah, and, and also, but that is actually an other thing. You could also say here, for example, here you want to define what happens if you close the GUI. You could use, I'm looking up how it's called, uh, flat arrow functions. Yep. And ah, flat arrow functions. Yeah. Those are the yeah. ones. Yeah. Some people hate them. Yeah. Yeah, but they, they don't understand them. Yeah, well, it's just for those kind of little thingies that you don't need anything. Yeah, exactly. So I just need to exit. Yeah, I don't need a whole function just to exit it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I actually also, if, if you, uh, 
I think I have an example. Here, this is not a GUI, but for from a menu. Here, if you want to create a small uh, menu that just gives you one command to run a certain a file. file, yeah, you you just put it like this. You create a menu. This is the object of the menu. And you say I add uh, an item called with the with the text run, and, and you say run the variable file. That's it. So the file would be yeah, uh, some kind of a path, of course. Uh, yeah. You know what comes to mind, Dimitri, uh, is yeah. uh, when I was first learning Auto Hotkey, it was it was between the vanilla and one point one, right? Mm -hmm. And I was learning web scraping in and dot notation stuff. And I would see the com object being used in examples in the forum and some of them really crazy, hard to read and other ones like so clear, you know, it was a dot notation and like exactly, it's the same thing here, right? The stuff on the left is that like, it's still achieving it, but it's, it's just not as intuitive, right? When, when, when Lexicos brought in com into auto hotkey and you could directly use dot notation, it was so much easier to read, and I and I get that with the GUIs because yes. it's just it's just clearer. It's just easier I, to understand. Yeah, it might not be like clearer, but it might be more understandable. Is what I would say because sometimes having a lot of dots one after the other, some people abuse of that. So, but it, uh, I think I, I, end, personally, I think it's it's more intuitive, right? Is it, it, yes. it for me? It just. Like once you understand this can be a reference and you can get a connection to it and then use that later and all this stuff and there's methods and you know properties and stuff to those things it's just oh my god it's so much easier for yeah, me yeah. and something else that i found annoying with uh, version 2 if you wanted to work with multiple guis um uh, then it was sometimes hard to to grab uh, what a control is and yet it, it, it was a lot of confusion. Also, if you wanted to add some uh, variables specific for that GUI, now it's very easy. You actually can say my GUI, you can say var uh, one mm. equals show. Mm -hmm. And now we have and a variable And afterwards, mm. you can, call that variable back so you don't need to use global variables because i hate global variables I, we we do don't worry we do <laughs> but, but here's if the you have large scripts you <laughs> oh no 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 i i i know what you mean man. <laughs> i was just trying to understand one program one of these days and uh, I use a debugger so i'm vs code i'm just debugging in there and i try to find a variable there's this huge list of variables there all the time. And I'm like, oh man, no, that's not good. But I was going to say, you see, Joe, and this is what I meant um, previously. Um, so now this variable here, this variable, as this is an object now, mm -hmm. that's the thing about making templates. Um, objects are like templates. So this object now has everything that all the other objects has and it's going to behave like all the other objects so you see that when you create a, an object you can just put dot variable dot equals whatever you want oh. right mm -hmm. as now this is an object it will behave like all the other objects is predictable is what i mean and that's the good thing about objects because they inherit whatever the other the main class does. So the main class allows you to set variables like that. Anything that is an object would allow you to do that. So, and, and makes your code kind of like more predictable and more easy to follow. Later on, we will talk a little bit more about that, but that's what is going on in here. Oh. So yeah, I, I just oh, typed tool this here. line and uh, here I add the property tooltip to uh, edit control. And I used it cheat a lot of uh, times because uh, then I also let run a, a mouse move function and it will check 
if the, the control beneath my mouse has a property tooltip. If he has a property tooltip. Can, can you show that quick? Can you, can you make an example of an edit control that has that tooltip and let's see how that looks? Uh, yes, of course. I think it's all message. Oh, so, uh, so, so, so you're adding this and then you're going to do a no message to capture that and show a tooltip is what you mean. Uh, wait, I think I have examples of this and it's, it's quite uh, mm. be this one. Here. Okay, now let's open the codes. Um, let's see. Here. It's an example, uh, I put, I make a function and I put uh, the GUI inside and mm -hmm. that makes that it's very easy to create, for example, two GUIs. Huh? Mm -hmm. Now you have two. Mm -hmm. So that's that shit. And here I think, let's search for tooltip. Over, I see it. Ah, there's here I say, here I create a drop down list mm -hmm. and I give it a property tooltip. Mm -hmm. And then. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. If. Here is the function uh, mouse move. Also, yep. I think if you, if you put the old message from mouse move inside the function, then it will only react to that GUI. And that's also quite cool. Yeah. And cool. here I check. Yeah, you're showing some pictures and here's where you actually go ahead and add a tool to right? Yeah, here I check if the, uh, is handle. the handle the same as the previous handle. Uh, mm -hmm. If it, it's not the same, then only then do something. Um, turn off the tooltip. And if the control, the current control has the property tooltip. Um, if it doesn't have the tooltip, don't show anything. If not, then you yeah. will display the tooltip. Then you yes. will use the flat arrow function to just go ahead and do that. Yes. Okay. And of course you also need. And how, 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 how does it look like when, once can you show it? Like, can you mouse over it and see how the tooltip looks? Oh, there you go. Right, so you just go ahead and show the tooltip whenever you're, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And the the nice thing is, once you have set the, the function of mouse move, it's very easy to add tooltips everywhere. Yeah. 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 Um, but maybe from, for pictures, uh, it's maybe possible that you need an, to add an, another option, uh, another style to to let it activate, to let it recognize the, the handle. I, it's awesome. possible that for some controls, it's, you need to add a, a star for it. But in yeah. general, the fact that you just set a property on the, onto that particular control, and that control has that property saved, that you don't have to have a global variable, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. I okay, also let's... have... Uh, this is another example for me. It's actually a, a GUI to, to uh, uh, set an uh, ini file. And the, the cool thing about it is uh, it will use the name of the control mm. and then it will check inside the ini file if the property exists. If it exists, it will copy that, that uh, value and um, then it, it will write it inside it. So that means you you define the rules where do you need to search the value of all the controls. And then it's quite easy. 
you don't need to uh, set the controls anymore because uh, a small loop at the end of your script will do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that way it's very easy to add uh, extra control and you don't need to you don't need to worry about it anymore. Yeah. But let's continue. Uh, uh, yeah, I also mentioned uh, a menu has also become uh, an object. It's actually the same. Yes. But yeah, I I didn't find ex for a menu. I found it. Yeah, it's also more clearer. Uh, it's easier to grab. Hold on it so. But for GUI it's 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 more useful I think because there are a lot of cases where you had a lot of GUIs to mix them up. Uh, for menus it's it's not that big of an advantage, but it's just nicer. Yeah. yeah. And your, also here, I, I think you also, also can set properties to an item that could also be useful for, in some cases. Yeah, if it is an object, all the objects have that. So you can do that with all of them because they, they, yeah. they all behave mainly the same. Yeah. yeah. I would assume your converter works better on the menus because they're simpler. Is that right? Um, let's see. What happens here? You would have to, no. So hold on, does, does your, I see that it's the same script on both sides. Um, does your ah, yeah. converter <laughs> goes the other way around? <laughs> I was, I was no. going to say, it's version one? Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, if it converts to version one, that would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, um, yeah, for example, yeah, let's there is, Ah, uh, what I'm doing for this GUI. So this is the version one script and the version two. Yeah, but of course it works, but it doesn't uh, it tries to use the v version one way how it happens, but in version two you have way efficient way to to, to get the, those values. So it, it tries to help you to convert it, but it doesn't convert it on the nicest way. But sure, it's normal because version one works in another mindset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's try another one. Uh, I think most of the examples work. So this gives you a, a GUI with some tabs. Nice. And of course, button okay. Yeah, I think Yeah, um in version two you have uh events on event. Yeah. And which is the... which is kind of like a little bit more logical to me, like something happened there is an event on the GUI so let's go ahead and respond to it and that's kind of like clearer to me what its purpose is and it is kind of like easier for me to understand um, yeah so you you say event and for example the event close and then you will uh, you will uh, define a, a function with one value and that's actually the the GUI the oh, objects yes. that mm -hmm. closed yeah mm -hmm. 
and if you do some other events you you get different variables and if you put a star inside it it's actually just saying yeah i will accept an array but the array can be empty so in a lot of yeah. cases it's 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 lazy to do that then you don't have any values but it, it will accept every uh every everything you, sh you, you should yeah yeah and that's actually how version one more or less is doing it yeah but here you have a more functionalities but sometimes i'm missing some like uh if you move a, a gui it would be nice if you you had an event for that for example oh you don't have an event for moving guis uh, so when, when when you when you move a gui doesn't it rise an, an event let me double check on that there should be one. You can do it with the on message, I think. You have oh, other ways to so do there it. There is no, there is no, okay. So you yeah. have to check on it. So you can change, click. Well, but I understand because these guys are actually events that happen within the GUI itself or within the window itself, not the moving of, of the window. I understand what you're saying. So these are, all of these, what I'm seeing here are things that happened on that window or control that you're referring to inside yeah. it not the window it's but if you go down where it says window events it should be there um so we have closed context move. maybe maybe it's not uh maybe it doesn't have that name hmm. that is interesting i will double check on that one when i have a little bit of a no. time for that no, I, I think it's it's you have one one event that is if you resize the GUI. That is also one that's quite useful. I, I use it yeah. also a lot with my quick converter. Of that you're course, able to... like th th that's something that I would be expecting to be there. I wouldn't expect it not to be there. Let's see. For example, you you move it and then you you change the. The, the size of the control so uh, it adapts to your your space that you have uh, that's very useful but in in, a, in some ways um, I had a window and I I add a, a second window and I like to have uh, like if I move one window that the other ones moves along with it and so mm -hmm. in that case, it would be be useful to to have something like that. But... I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna give a note um just real quick. Um, can I share my screen for a second, and yeah. just to kind of like clarify what I was what I meant. So, um, here you were looking at on the on event, right? So that's for version two here, and I would uh I was a little bit surprised that you couldn't find those. But instead of doing like on message, you have two more functions. You have on command, and that is that actually reacts when we get the WM command message, okay? And the on notify, which would react by the WM notify command. Ah, yeah. So probably for specific here on the on for notify, that. Yeah, so it's just for those. And probably the WM notify would be the one that contains when you move a window, I would assume. But I will double check on that. But I, I, I was kind of like, huh, that is that is interesting. <laughs> like we, we we cannot we cannot know when a window was moved. I think we would be able to do so, but we would have to understand that the on message, you know, like this particular is this, message would be. I, I, I never said that I knew everything. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, I didn't either. I just went ahead and checked on the, on the, on the uh, help file because it was really surprising to me because it is kind of like one of the most used things. Whenever you minimize a window or maximize a window, I would like to be notified of that. And I would perform some actions on that, right? So I would be a little bit be like concerned if I cannot access that. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say it would be the unnotify. I think that's the one. Yeah. Um, then uh, labels are gone. That's also a big thing of uh, version two. Uh, 
on the GUIs, like labels you don't no, need. No, no, everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean like anymore. labels, like label, like a name for thing. a go-to, kind of thing. yeah, a go-to yeah. thing. Yeah, so okay. it, it goes up. Yeah, is, and is there's conscious, also yeah. something where my converter tries to do something, but mm. it, it's it's hard to. Well, I would, I would just that. convert that into a global function. It would be a yeah, function, but, but global, I would say. Yeah, but um, yeah, if you have multiple labels, labels one inside the other. They... In version two, you can nest functions in one inside the other. Yes. But that would be a weird. It would be a weird thing there. It, yeah. it is a complicated thing there. <laughs> Nested it's labels. very complicated to convert yep. uh, a lot of labels with some order and one one starts there and does a command and then afterwards jumps you get onto the one next. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and basically, you see, you see the reason, the fact that you're having troubles converting it into VS, in version two, that is also the trouble trying to understand the code. When you're trying to understand the code and you have all these nested labels and a set timer that jumps around every certain time and you don't know about it, like there's a lot of things that are happening at the same time and you're like, what is going on? When you're trying to debug a script or a program and everything is jumping around like that, it creates a lot of confusion. Maybe that's the reason why they're getting rid of it, and you just call the function. You need it, call it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and and you also uh, mentioned the uh, nested functions. This yep. is also something new. Yeah, it is something that and... you can do. And then that concept of the closure, I haven't been able to figure it out yet. But yeah, that is something that I still don't know how they work. And. Here I, I'll show you something that would maybe also surprise some people. I don't know how you do surprises everybody, don't worry. Um, So what I've done here is maybe it's just to show what's possible. You have here a function make greeter and it actually has a function nested inside it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here you, you call that function with hello and then um, you actually make a function. Yeah, this is making a function. And then you uh, call it twice. Yeah, let's just run it. But uh, of course, first I'm calling here my function and it's uh, called greet. It's the same name as the nested function inside the other function, but it doesn't have as anything related. It has to nothing it. to do with, yeah, yeah, it has nothing yes. to do. The one that you're calling on the top is actually calling the one that you have here at the bottom that is the one that yes. is outside of the function, right? Yeah. yeah. And that is something I wanted to show because that could maybe confuse some people how this would work, but yeah. And nested functions, I, I like them because uh, it's, it's nice to use them if you, you're creating GUIs. Hmm. You have specific function that you normally would only use in combination of, of the GUI that you're making and then you can, you can you can do things like this, that you have the same name of the function multiple times in your oh, script. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm kind of so, getting it now. I'm kind of getting what, what is going to. Yeah. So the greet function that's around line six, that's nested. Is that mm -hmm. only available within the make greeter? Yes. Function? Yes. Okay. And, 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 and correct me if I'm wrong here, but that function hasn't been defined yet because it hasn't been called. Now that you call it down here, now it gets created. And now every time you use this variable here as a function is actually calling this function right here. That's what it's doing. So 
it is kind of like an anonymous function. You can put whatever name you want to it. Huh. I'm understanding what is going on. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, uh, this here, this make greeter is kind of like just creating the function and sending it back to the variable. And now you can have whatever variable with that function. So now that variable becomes the function now. Yeah, but you could also say something like, now we will, of course, we'll break. Call uh, it. <laughs> uh, and then we, yeah, this isn't. It shouldn't because you have never. Oh yeah, the ver the variable, global. No, group. that's username. That's a. No, no, but you're you haven't assigned a ver because that's a ver that function right there doesn't exist. G hasn't been declared. Ah, yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> now. Right uh, now you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. So now that's the f my first function. The first grade, the function, yeah. uh, This one. Now the username, that's this one, yes. which is calling this guy and it's also yeah. calling greet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. But basically it, it, what it means is that that function is only created once you call this one. So that function technically doesn't exist and you cannot call it. It uh, only exists. It only exists when you call this other function. Yeah, I was thinking that you maybe could could call it like something. You think? I don't think this works. Huh? No, I don't think that would work. <laughs> nah. Let me see. Is and Dimitri? Yes. Now this it one should fail, work. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. That 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 will not work. So you have no access to this function unless you actually call it through the main one. So it is kind of like, and that's great because that I, this is what I would call like an anonymous function, like, I, or, or no, not anonymous. Like I would use it but just, as a type of protected function. You cannot call it unless you call my, you can call yeah. it the way how I want you to call it. But behind the scenes, I'm going to do something with it. I, I, I know where I would use it. If, it is a little, it is those type of advanced coding things. Like I, oh, well, you see when people are using, creating a library and there's a set of functions that they put a lot of underscores on it and say like internal functions that you're yeah. not supposed to use. Oh, they, you, yeah. You're not supposed to use them because they're only for, uh, for and, so, so, and then they, they don't want you to use them, but you can use them anyways. <laughs> but yeah. this if you have lost scripts, this is very useful. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But again, for somebody who is not a programmer, this would not make a big of a difference. Like, yeah, what, yeah, what can I do with that? Well, and I don't think it's going to trip them up because they're not even going to get around to it. Right. So it's <laughs> yeah. It's not like, yeah, I, yeah. So what? <laughs> But again, notice what I told you, though. Most of the changes that we're referring to are things that are not going to impact uh, uh, a person who is new to AutoHotkey. Basically, these kind of things are the ones that we're like, oh, wait, you can do that now? Oh, man, that's cool. But uh, a person who is new to AutoHotkey is going to be like, what do I do with that? Like, why would I need that? Um, the main part of AutoHotkey, I would say, uh, Dimitri, if you can show the changes between hot keys and hot strings, that is a, that is one that would affect people that is near. Uh, it's okay. not like a big difference, like when you're defining a hot key. Yeah, we have hot keys. Yeah, hot keys and hot strings, especially when you're n not like that, but defining them like. Um, yeah. Yes. So uh, it's, that's from version one, right? Uh -huh. this is, so if you... so, yeah, I actually, my converter indeed only works one way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it goes that way. I, want, I, I love version good. two. I understand why the changes are made and that's yeah. the future. And I have no intention of going back. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. But basically, as you can tell, the only thing that it did is that added these brackets around that. So now, again, as everything is a function, now 
you this would be kind of like the function definition and these brackets tell you where the code is i think you don't need the return any longer when you're doing that because we already know no. when the where the code is going to end right so but i i like the return <laughs> no 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 i know i know i'm just actually making the comment that now yeah, that we have braces around it, then you don't need the return any longer because you're not returning any value. <laughs> if you convert it like this, you don't need the braces. Right. You don't, in, in, and as we were discussing, Joe, in this case, you don't need the, per, the parentheses. So you can actually just leave it with the quotation marks. The only thing that would change, so if you can take off the parentheses, would be the quotation marks. That's the only thing that would change between yeah, version actually, one and version two. That yeah, now you version two in the deed doesn't need the, how the do you call it? Parentheses. The parentheses, oh, terrible word. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't like it. I always put them because for me, it's way clearer to... to uh, yeah. It is something that also, Joe if, was if you will, <laughs> if, if, if you will convert something with my converter, I always put them. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you just use the functions, right? <laughs> um, uh, but Joe, I don't know if you want to tell me what you were telling me. <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, it was just very confusing. If you'd see something that doesn't have like a, a, a message box was the example I think we mm -hmm. saw that, right? Mm -hmm. is in, yeah. in version two, you can make it look like a command, even though it's technically a function. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and lose the parens there. And this is what I'm like, oh my God, like that to me. That you know, is so like, bad, oh, right? Like, oh my yeah, God, that so is bad. ungodly. <laughs> but Isaiah gave me a really good explanation as to why um, it's, to, it's possible and how to think about um, why it's still a function um, and, and how they're different. Uh, by the way, by the way, j just to clarify something, Joe, this is also a function. It's the same. So in version one, it is also a function, right? So the, 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 the reason why, I, I, I would say, the reason why it irks me, because at the beginning it was actually annoying, is mm -hmm. the quotation marks. If you don't have the quotation marks, it doesn't feel that bad. But... I understand why the quotation marks are there. I want them there. I need those expressions everywhere. I, I need those. Um, but let me let me try to explain and probably uh, keep this. Uh, let me show you my screen real quick and show you why you might want to um, rethink about that uh, decision, Dimitri. <laughs> so... Uh, let, let's just go ahead and uh, I'm just going to ask you a question and you're going to go ahead and, and, and try to answer this one. So, uh, hold on, let me get a little bigger. Oh, not that much. So what are you expecting from this? What can you tell me about that variable? What would we contain? Um, mm -hmm. How about this one? Um, what would that contain? It should pro with the, the return of run is probably mm -hmm. if it's if it succeeded running. Maybe. You see, you see that. You see how he had to think about it. Like it, probably this, probably that. I think that's the key thing. If I'm using this thing and I'm not expecting any ver, I'm not expecting any uh, results, or I don't want to save the results because I don't want to save the results of a command. I just want to tell the computer what to do. Show me a box with that particular text. There it is. And I don't want to know the result because I can see it. If it worked, it would be there. If it didn't work, it wouldn't be there. That's it. It's simple. The same with run. The run, I don't need to know if you ran the freaking thing or not because I know because I'm going to see it when it runs. So usually the difference between a command and a function 
is that the command is usually a function that doesn't return any value or that I don't care about the value. So as soon as you put the parenthesis around it, a person like me or many other people would right away think that I could do something like uh, this. Why couldn't I? But notice that the, the lint command told me right away, no, you cannot do that. Hey, why not? Because the run command shouldn't actually return any values. But if you put it as a function, I think I can do it. You see what I mean? Now, if I would do like, for example, in string, right? So in string, uh, my documents test, that makes a little bit more sense to me. Um, I'm just missing some parameters here, sorry. So that would make more sense because I know that this is going to return something. It's going to tell me if it was true or if it was false or if, you know, that yeah. would help me out. But for a message box, that's not going to help me out much. Like what, what is, what is that going to, that doesn't mean anything. And the fact that you write something as a function would make me think that I could do it or would make, because for example, notice this. Remember, Joe, you have shown me that um, Maestrith has his own message box command. Well, not message box. He has an M. At least it's just M. Yeah. But what if he wants to write a, 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 a message box function and the name of the message box is really similar to this one? It would be kind of confusing. Is that a function? Is, that, is, is it going to return a value? Is it going to do something? That's the difference between a... a when I would use the parentheses and when I wouldn't. If I'm not respecting any type of results, then I would just put it like this. And I know that that's a command and it's not going to return anything. That, that would be the reasoning behind it. You know, like, but not everybody. And the funny thing is that if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. You can put your parentheses all the time. So it is optional. You can do either. Um, I, I see us uh, feed to... Uh returns a result of the message box for message box what does it return um the value what you clicked i think uh, okay wait okay in the case I'm that i had checking. one selected right okay it so returns then... yes or no or right so cancel that... we try yes so now i could say for this one i would do it so i would put my test I would put my title now in the options. And that's the cool thing. The options now are uh, written. You can actually use the word confirm or, you know, you don't have to put the numbers anymore. Oh, I think, nice. yes. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to use numbers anymore. Um, now you can just use confirm or something like that, I think. And now if I'm doing that, then... I would use it as a function because I know that it's going to return something. So if message box confirm, then I know that I'm going to show the message box when they click, it's going to be checked against an if statement equals yes or something. You know what I mean? In that case, it makes sense for me to use it that as a function. Right? Yeah, because it makes sense there. But here on the top, it, I'm not using the, the, the thing for nothing. Then I would use it without the the parentheses, my personal preference. Because for me, when I'm taking a look at code really quickly, I want to know if I'm missing a, a value or not or whatever. And that's my way of telling myself, no, I'm not, I'm not using any value from message box at the moment. And, and I think, as I said, this is where, you know, it happened earlier. And I heard you say it earlier too, and I'm not knocking what you're doing, right? But mm -hmm. the, what we have to change our mindset because in version two, like you were saying, this is a command. It's like, it's not a command. It's still a function. It's still a function, yeah. But we got to convert it to saying it's a function that doesn't return a value versus it's a function that does return a value. That's how we should be thinking about it. Uh, and yeah, when you think about it that way, it, yeah. it makes more sense, right? Yeah, like, then absolutely. I can get behind it. Are you going to use the value for something? No, you're going to discard it. Then, right. then don't put parentheses. Right. It's not meritorious. It's not that you have to do it that way. It's just my preference. Because every time I see it without it, I think it's a command. 
Yeah. No, and that's what I'm saying. Like, no, it's not. It, it, it's not always it, like that. Nothing exactly. that doesn't return a value. Okay, I get. All right, I, I just need to read. <laughs> and and here's the thing. What I was just mentioning now in version two, and this is one of the good things that came out of this is that you know now you can just use the hexadecimal. You can so, use a decimal, but you can use K or O. It's you can say okay, cancel O C. It's kind of funny. It's you know the whole thing in VBA when you take a something from like out of Excel and you're converting uh -huh. the macro and it has the constants there. And you're like, I got to look up that number. Well, this is a, now, now auto hotkey. Now you don't the, have to. Yeah. yeah. It has a, now you just say, okay, because that's what you mean. Right. right. So, um, okay. Cancel. And, and it is kind of like really intuitive. I want the okay and cancel buttons. Right. Yeah, that's what I want. Abort, retract, nor, or ARI if you want. Yes, no, cancel. You can actually name the buttons that you want, you know? So basically, uh, and the same with the icon, X, question, exclamation. And well, I and your IntelliSense sense will be offering those up for you too, right? As yes, you're so, yes, you know, yes. Awesome. Well, I'm not really sure if it gives you those options. At some, at some point it will. Uh, oh, well, know. it should actually. <laughs> it should, but I'm not really sure if it does right now. So if I say... Yeah. Well, it'll get there. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe. What what extension are you using? Oh, so right now I'm using AutoHotKey 2 from, um, let me show you this guy, AHK2 Language yeah, Support that's... by THQ. Uh, it's really good. I think, ah, uh, oh yeah, that's the one that I, yep. it isn't uh, sometimes uh, the explanation very large? Um, yeah, it actually did, for example, for yeah, message that's just because that. I so... just uh, translated it with the Google Translate. <laughs> oh, I remember you told oh. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At first it was in Chinese, <laughs> and oh, then right. I, I messaged the creator, yeah, is it possible to, to add the English uh, oh, to it? Yeah, I saw that it was in Chinese. And I also yeah. gave him... Uh, the translation, I just translated it uh, with Google Translate. It was quite okay. It's, oh, it was good. That was awesome. because, because he first translated it uh, to Chinese. <laughs> but here's the thing. This uh, uh, option, this, this particular language mode, gives you the information that you can, and you can actually take a look at it right there as soon as you type the command. And while you're typing, it tells you where you're at. So you're in text. So this is my text. And then when you put the comma, it tells you where you are. Now you're in title. So now you're, you're never lost about what your parameter is going to be. So now, and it, now I'm in options. And for every time it changes, it gives you the information for that one. So if you want the options, there you go. So that, that is good. And the fact that it's text now, in version two is good because now even if I forget, I know that I could just say, oh yeah, confirm. <laughs> it's it's gonna be like that. It's it's very intuitive in that sense. Yeah, uh but you you did mention one really cool thing about uh, VS Code and that is it will even uh show you the uh text, the, the comments that you put above your custom functions. Oh, right. Yes, exactly. So it, it I has love a, that. Yeah. So you put the comments on top of your function and they would just go ahead and do that too. Yeah. Awesome. Um, let me see about, we were beside the difference between functions and commands, um, which again, that is optional. It will always, you can use whatever you want, but there are some other things that changed that even if you don't want them are going to be there. <laughs> so um, a few things I do have to tell you how we mentioned previously, auto hotkey too is more strict, right? But there's a lot of other little details. Joe, you that, uh, that we work a lot with GUIs, now it says DPI scaling is enabled by default on scripts. Cool. Awesome. So basically yeah, <laughs> the issues that the issues that we usually see about resizing a GUI and the, right. the DPI scaling is going to be there. So I'm not really sure how that is going to 
um, affect or how is it going to look like, but that is one thing that is good, but it's always there. And other things that mm, I, I would say the most annoying part is um, the, the change in name of certain functions. There are some functions that I'm used to calling them somehow, like object create, create object or come object create. Call object. Yeah, right, right. Right. So that is going to change. It is totally changed. And now you have to learn it, and that's the only way. So there's no two ways, like with functions and commands. Do you have any idea why he did that? Like why? That seems like a weird thing to change. It was a weird thing to change. I'm not really sure about it. So I'm curious. Yeah, I'm I not guess really... he, he found it more logical names, or maybe no. names that were used in other languages. Well, it, it, which is a good point, Dimitri. When you search for something like on Stack Overflow and you see it's a slightly different version, you no, know, how they call um, in other languages, right? And maybe it's closer to how a lot of other languages call it. So, oh, uh, right. And then probably, yeah. Makes if you have troubles of yeah. that, my converter is quite good with, with renaming the functions. Yeah. But I think the main the main changes um, are not are not going to be that noticeable unless you're dealing with objects and very advanced functions. That's when you're going to actually notice a few key differences. The most annoying one that I do not like is the one that um, objects when you use the curly braces to define an object you cannot loop through them with a for loop. That's yeah, the that's only huge job. Yeah, um, it, is, it is a huge thing. So I'm, uh, I'm not sure. Wait, I prepared. Let me, let, me share, let me share my screen real quick. So if you go ahead and, um, oh, come on. So if you go ahead and have an object and you do this, right? So yeah. um, name. So let me just put this in quotation mark. Uh, time, 2.30, whatever. Doesn't matter. And you try to do the four key value in object. I don't think it works. I think one is, is this one or the other one, there's, uh, let me see. Uh, I always, that's the reason why I don't like it because I don't remember. So this one works. How about a map? So, oh, hold on. Am I in version two? It probably. Yeah, I am. No. Uh. Um, let me see a map then. So object equals map, is it? Well, one from, to... from what we said. Oh, the I'm map sorry, sorry, doesn't... sorry. It's, it's not that. It's the array, by the way. So let me see one. Because now you have an index instead of the key. Right, exactly. To... Yeah. So, so just now, use an I. <laughs> uh, that, that's what I would say, right? But no. Oh, look at that. Hold on. Am I missing something or? <laughs> Hold on. What the heck? It, maybe, maybe it didn't work when you tried it and then, you know, just had the mental. No, no. I, I, I actually even made a okay. post on that. You read I was about like, it? I made a post on it. I was like, what? How, gotcha. how, how did you remove that? And he was like, yep, it's because you're doing something that you shouldn't. Well, I was going to say with a map, I, that kind of makes it because it's not a key value pair, right? Exactly. It's let me, let me try if it is that one. Ah, there it is. So hold on now. Map. Oh, so I'm not running the correct version. That's why it has been working. Ah. HK version. So A. Let me see what is going on. Hold on. Yeah, so if you is... cannot call maps, then you're probably running V1. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and it is interesting because ah, uh, so something is wrong with my thingy. So let me put it in VS code then. He will know what to do. So um the only problem with this is that I have to save it. So, 
So let's go ahead and test this out. Um, if I use control at nine, so that's it's, version one. It's the curly break brackets where you're talking about. This one, right? Well, the curly brackets. This one here, yeah. you yeah. cannot loop through it using. Um, so let me go ahead and verify this. So it just doesn't have an, an enumerator? Is that what? Exactly. It should tell you that it shouldn't. Um, so right now it's working because I have the map. You're oh, using sorry, the, the array. The, the array. But this one should actually fail. So let me remove the message box now because I know that it's working fine. This one. So value not enumerable. So what happens here is that if, and this is the one thing that would be kind of like throwing people off because we use object very often and we think we could actually loop through them. I say, yes, so um, go, go to your for loop and put mm -hmm. after objects, put there own uh, dots, own props. Yeah, that's the way how you would do it. So what it does is that, mm. so here's what happens. Remember, an object, so variables have indexes, right? Maps have key and value, which is the reason why you can use key and value here. But objects don't have keys and values. They have properties. That's what they have. So as they are properties and not key value pairs, yeah. then you cannot loop through key values on something that doesn't have key values. Right. So what you have to do is loop through their properties, which props would be. Okay. Well, it's not the end of the world. You just have to. It's not the end of, it's yeah. not the end of the world, but it's one of the little details that threw me off. And he was like, yeah, because you're not supposed to do that. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you're used to it because of V1. And <laughs> that's what they say. But in any case, I mean, like, that would be, if you ask me, what is the biggest change that would affect the most people? The quotation marks, that everything is an expression. Uh -huh. And this little detail with the objects, because we usually use objects more often. I can't tell that. you how often I do that. So, yeah. That... So, so that is so often that this would be the one that would throw you off very quickly and you would be like, huh? But Except I don't actually have to rethink anything other than just knowing add the own props, right? right. And I, so you I just have to do that. It, so I'm like, all right, whatever. That's not a big yeah. deal. And that's the, the, the point, what I meant, meant prior to this. When you start playing with AutoHotKey version two, you will notice that even though there are changes, yep. the changes are well, not as drastic as you might think. Yep. So... Just yesterday, Jackie and I recorded uh, a podcast on, hey, what are best practices where you're learning a new language? And I think the very, if it wasn't the first one, it was number two, was to have someone who knows what you're doing spend 20 minutes with you and help you get started and tell you to look out for this and that, right? And it's like that this is one of those things that we, you know, would have been, a, hey, yeah. hey, idiot, you know, look out for this. Uh, oh, man. Uh, when, I, when I hit this wall, like I was doing that and I was like, why it doesn't work? Yeah. And, 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 and then I spent like half a day trying to figure it out, trying to figure out if it was my problem. If it, I searched the forums and there was this one thing that had to do a little bit with it. Nobody had asked about it. I had to create a post and then they answered. And I was like, okay. So again, other people who are programmers knew the difference right away. I was not. I had to spend much time just to figure it out, right? Now, now, let me ask you this. Sorry for interrupting. Um, and uh, um, we've been on here for an hour and 45 minutes, and I have a call Ooh. here coming up. So, But uh, let's try to wrap, somewhat wrap it up. But how do you guys, uh, besides like with your tool as AS, which obviously has a little bug right now, but how are you having both versions and easily, like I see with VS Code, you're telling it to use version two, right? Right. Is that? Yes. So each of the... Plan? That would be the easiest way for if you, I, I really recommend, you know, playing with VS Code because it makes everything a little bit easier. But basically each, I have two languages, a AutoHotKey++ for version one mm -hmm. and AutoHotKey2 for version two. Now, each of them have some settings about what their interpreter, where the path is. Well, and, so and you're using a different extension, correct? 
as A is for the version two? You're saving your version twos as like dot h two or something? Right, that's right. Yes. So A H two for version two, so that it automatically detects it. But you can change the you can change the language at any point. So you can just click sure. in the language here and you can change it. The other language then also has its settings pointing to the the path to the version one of it. So each extension launches a different script. That's what's going on. And this is a... can you also show the settings where he defines which, which extension will use which uh Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, which so, file extension will use which setting? Yes. So basically, if you go to your settings and go to open the JSON file like this, um, there is a, uh, a part that you can add. Cool. And if you don't know the name, you say files associations. Yeah. You, you can just put it associations and so on. And it would actually give you the thing and it would add it. And for each extension, you tell the ID of the language that you want to use. Now the ID, when you click on the language, it gives you the ID right next to it. So HK for the one and HK two for this one. So if you want a specific ID, you just put it there. And whenever you open a file that it has that extension, it would just go with that language. Okay. Yep. Um, there were still two things I, I wanted to mention regarding uh, V2. Yep. And uh, one thing I think we already mentioned it in other videos, but uh, that it's mandatory to use the includes. Yeah, great point. Right. The thing that Isaiah hates with oh, the, yeah. you know, that if you don't, you put them in your library, you don't have to use an include, right? You're, you're so <laughs> glad that's going away. I'm glad. Uh, it just it just saves me uh, right. issues down the line. <laughs> and, and another one is uh, classes that you need to, uh, if you put the, the classes at the bottom of your script and mm -hmm. there is a return uh, between the, the, the script that you will execute, then it, it will fail. Oh, I didn't know that one. So they they got to be in the auto exec section. Is that what you're saying? And actually, or, it, will, or on top. it will still work, but you will get an error. So oh, well, you can, a warning. A warning is what you mean. Yeah, yeah a, an annoying warning. I... <laughs> yeah. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, because this is one of the things that bugs me about version one, is if you don't use an include on a class, it just fails silently. Like, you don't even oh, know. Right. No, exactly. No, no, no. But that is not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, which is no, no. honestly, that's it, great. In AutoHotKey version two, this failing silently is being removed. You know, they're I'll, keeping that. Uh, as far as the classes go, I'll, I'll be the first to say that. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear uh, that. <laughs> but a lost time of just like why you, you is see, this you, working? You you get an error, but it still works. It just it, tells it you, has yeah. something to do with the initiation that didn't happen, and in right. some cases it would give you problems. Right. No, but in general, you know what? Basically, myself at least, and and, and I think this helps with that. You should have your classes in their own file because they are. You should think of mm -hmm. a class as a template. Mm -hmm. That's a mm -hmm. template for other things. So yeah. that should not be in the middle of your code. Your code should be clean. And then in your code, you're referring to a class, then include that class. That's the idea behind it. If you, yeah. it, it and basically, this is totally new to me. And I have been using AutoHotKey version 2 for a little while now. The reason why it's new to me is because all my classes, I include them. So I never noticed, I, you know, yeah, like yeah. as I include them all right. the time, which, I never got the, the warning, you know, so. Which just, actually, uh, Isaiah, to support, to support your point of this, by version two, before, you know, it, you were doing it because you're a better, you know, programmer in that sense of doing it automatically. It's, it's forcing us to be better program style wise, right? Like that's a good thing. Well, so yeah, yeah it's, a, it's it is not about we may not we not love it at first, but once you get no, used to it, it's, it's, it's no. I think it's a you know I I like with classes. Mm -hmm. I, I totally understand. It's a template. 
it's not something you should probably have in your file. You know, you should have it separate right. on, on average. And, um, but in general, what I would say, like, it's not about being better or being worse. It's just about like there's a logic it's just, behind it. It's yeah, a but logic it's behind it. Like, what would you refer to something that yeah. you haven't even seen yet? Right, but I, I'm just saying there's generally, you know, there's patterns of what what are better, you know, better accepted uh, standards. And this would fall into that thing. It's not a must do. It's just right. better, you know, it to is, do that. It is like it will save you troubles. Like right. the ones that you were having, like in this case, right. it was silently at right. that time, right? There is a problem of you referring to something that your script haven't seen yet. And if you put something below the return line, the script hasn't seen that because it's not going to reach that point until it, you know, gets there. And if it reaches a return first, it's not going to get there. So he's going to say like, hey, why are you referring to something that I haven't seen yet? That doesn't make any sense. So the logic behind it is like, yeah, you should put it first. Uh -huh. And in, in my case, I would rather have them in different pipe and, and include them. But you can put them at the top of your scripts. But then that would make your real script at the bottom. And that would be difficult. So you're forced to put it in a different file, you know? But it says that I have a question. Why uh, doesn't the same thing occur when you're calling functions? Um, if I remember correctly, what happens with functions is that um, the, the interpreter, well, the um, compiler or the, the, the interpreter yeah. reads the file first and the functions, it compiles those first and puts them into memory. The same yeah. as static uh, variable. Why does it doesn't do it with classes? Ah, because classes are not compiled. You're not calling a class. <laughs> a class is a template. A, a class is really a template. It's just like um, this code is going to behave like that, and you can use it to create more code that behaves like that, but a little bit different. That's it. So, so it's not really compiled. It's not actually memory. It's just like a template of what you're going to do later on. Um, but and I could be wrong on that one, but I, that's how I would understand it. And a function, I know for sure that they're actually read first, put into mm -hmm. memory, the same with static variables and global variables, all of those, the interpreter grabs them first. That's why you get those errors at the beginning before the script is even run about the variables or if a function declaration was incorrect or whatever. Yeah. Well, I think it's been awesome. Um, unfortunately, I'm out of time, and uh, but yeah. really good intro to V2 of you know a lot of the the differences, you know, and and I, again, I think for some people it's a big improvements. For others, it's like oh, I'm going to oh scratch my, my head I have to do it differently. But, yeah, but right, and no one likes change. That's the most people, right? It's yeah. it's. You know, but um, yeah, thank you both of you guys, uh, Dimitri, for doing the homework on it, and Isaiah for helping pitch in and explain some of the stuff. It's very. I am, you know, I, I, I'm excited for it. It's just at the same time, I think one of the big draws for Auto Hotkey is the simplicity of it for bringing new people in. So I'm a little concerned on that yeah. aspect. Yeah. yeah, right, right. I would but, say, I would say, like, just give it a try and you will, um, you just check how many differences or just go to the, to the link. Um, so let me just show that before you finish, which is a very good part of the Auto Hotkey. Um, and version two, uh, if you look for changes, it gives you the changes from one to two and it tells you what was removed. And it is a little bit of a list, but I actually read, especially if you say like, how do I work with this kind of things? You go there and you will notice that variables didn't change much. Expressions have some differences. Objects, this is the annoying one and so on. If you just take a look at it, and from time to time, you take a look at what change. You will notice the changes are minimal. It looks like a lot, but that's because it has been working in this for what? Two years now? Three years? So there's a lot of little changes. But if you take a little time, you will notice that the changes are not really impactful. Like, oh, no, it's going to be so hard now. Uh, also, an important one that a lot of people will use, uh, the variable of clipboard also has changed. Yeah, it is now a clipboard. <laughs> oh, wow. So, so, yeah, because because you had all the variables yeah, start sure. with A, except right. for clipboard. And he was right. like, why? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. And awesome. one, one last tip, according to the documentation, 
if you go to a function and you click, uh, you change it from V2 to V1, you, it's easy to get the corresponding uh, function. Okay, so the name I gotcha. has changed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Um, and by the way, which I'll, I'll put up on the screen here, uh, I have a, a V2 page. It's, I think, v com slash V2. Uh, and there's links to the, the webinar we did, other, you know, videos we've done on V2, some interesting talks. Tank and Isaiah has had a really long discussion into V2 and what's been going on with it. And uh, anyway, just a bunch of stuff there. So thanks thanks again, you guys, for uh, this has been really cool. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.